We all know that you need to eat protein to build muscle, and carbs and fats help provide the energy needed to fuel your physical activities. But these are just the macronutrients. Most people are completely unaware of the powerful effects that certain vitamins and minerals, or micronutrients, have on your capacity to build more muscle, recover faster, and to see better results. So today I want to highlight the key nutrients that you need to build muscle aside from the surface level protein, carbs, and fats. And first is a nutrient that will probably surprise you, cholesterol. Now, I know doctors, trainers, and dietitians have been demonizing cholesterol for years now for its supposed negative effect on heart health. However, research now indicates that there's no link between cholesterol intake and the risk of heart disease. Even though we have this evidence, many people and professionals still cling to the belief that cholesterol and high cholesterol foods like eggs are bad. If that happens to be you and you're trying to build muscle, you should also know that reducing your cholesterol intake can significantly impair muscle growth. For example, in a 12-week long strength training study, the scientists observed a dose-response relationship between dietary cholesterol and gains in lean muscle mass. They also mentioned that this link held up even when the data was controlled for protein intake. In other words, the more cholesterol the participants ate, the more muscle they gained in response to resistance training, regardless of how much protein that they took in. So don't feel like you have to follow a low cholesterol diet. It's not necessary for heart health, and it can actually significantly blunt your muscle growth progress. Next is a nutrient that I've talked about quite a bit because it's so important for athletes, zinc. It's well known that zinc is a crucial mineral for your immune system, but very few people realize that it also plays a crucial role in maintaining and gaining muscle mass. In fact, research shows that a zinc deficiency directly causes lean body mass losses, and these muscle losses can be restored with zinc consumption. Research also shows that even a small zinc deficiency can stunt growth and human development. One reason not getting enough zinc can impair muscle growth is that it significantly lowers levels of the primary male sex hormone, testosterone, which is obviously important for muscle growth. The problem is, according to the World Health Organization, 31% of people worldwide have a zinc deficiency, and in some parts of the world, that number is as high as 73%. This becomes an even bigger issue for athletes since they need more zinc than the average person because zinc gets lost through sweat, which is why people that train hard are especially likely to be zinc deficient. So make sure that you're eating foods that score high in zinc, such as oysters, beef, beef liver, chicken shrimp, pork legumes, and nuts. Or you can also take a zinc supplement instead. Another very important vitamin for muscle growth is vitamin D3. This vitamin is produced naturally by the skin after exposure to ultraviolet radiation, particularly UVB, like what you get from sunlight. Vitamin D is important for people that want to improve their strength levels because it's required for optimal bone strength, immune function, mineral metabolism, neuromuscular functioning, and testosterone synthesis. That's why your vitamin D levels influence strength development so much. And interestingly enough, your vitamin D levels also impact how resistant you are to injuries. One major problem is that public health authorities have significantly underestimated how much vitamin D you actually need for optimal health and well-being. For a long period, it was recommended to have a vitamin D level of around 20 to 30 nanomoles per liter. But nowadays, large meta-analytic research shows that all-cause mortality decreases with vitamin D3, but requires a minimum of 50 nanomoles per liter. And some evidence even suggests that it's better to have even higher levels around 100 to 115 nanomoles per liter. It's hard to say exactly how much sun exposure or supplementation you need per day to reach the optimal amount of vitamin D because a number of factors will influence that, including the climate you live in and even your skin pigmentation. But during the winter months, or if you experience low amounts of sun exposure in general, a vitamin D3 supplement will most likely prove to be beneficial for you. If you really want to be accurate, it's best to do a blood test to see what your levels are and from there supplement if you need additional D3 to reach optimal levels. Next is water. Believe me, I know hydration isn't the most exciting topic in the fitness world, but it is extremely important for several reasons. First of all, don't forget that your muscles are about 79% water. This is actually one way that dehydration impairs strength. Even slight dehydration reduces things like the motivation to train, body temperature control, and of course, exercise performance. Dehydration also blunts muscle growth by lowering muscle protein synthesis while raising protein breakdown. Just a 2% dehydration rate is enough to impair cognition, attention, and movement control. 
So being dehydrated will prevent muscle growth on a biological level and will also reduce how well you can perform at the gym. That's why it's important to stay hydrated from a muscle building perspective. The question is, how much water do you need to consume daily? Unfortunately, there is no set in stone answer here. It depends on a number of factors, including the climate you live in and the amount that you sweat. However, a good rule of thumb is to drink water as soon as possible whenever you start feeling thirsty and to make sure that your urine is a light color. If it's darker, you're likely dehydrated and need to have more water. Eight glasses of water per day is an old rule that can also help you if you struggle to drink enough water every day. Moving on to magnesium. Magnesium is crucial for your health and body composition, and the average healthy body contains about 22 to 24 grams of this mineral. Having less of it or being deficient in magnesium can cause insulin resistance, low testosterone, depression, bone loss, high blood pressure, stress, hypersensitivity, and disrupted neuromuscular functioning. On the other hand, research shows that getting enough magnesium boosts testosterone and strength levels while reducing stress. One of the reasons magnesium is so crucial for your health and your body composition is that it plays a significant role in the quality of your sleep. The issue with magnesium is that many people happen to be deficient. Research indicates that only 15 to 50% of Americans consume enough magnesium. Plus, we have data that shows that athletes likely need at least 20% more magnesium because magnesium is needed for the repair of muscle tissue and because just like zinc, magnesium does get lost through your sweat. Now, if you eat a lot of nutrient-dense foods, especially lots of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and beans, you might get more than enough magnesium. But to be on the safe side, it's generally a good idea to take a magnesium supplement. Another nutrient that can highly influence muscle growth is, of course, creatine. Creatine is an organic molecule produced mainly in the liver and to a lesser extent in the kidneys and the pancreas. This molecule enhances phosphocreatine storage in your muscles, which increases the amount of phosphate availability for ATP recycling. Bottom line is that your muscles can produce more energy. That's why supplementing with creatine can enhance strength, power, and general workout performance. As I said, creatine supplementation is also excellent for muscle growth. For example, we have a study that found that men that trained for six weeks and also supplemented with creatine gained on average two kilograms more muscle mass than men that received a placebo instead of the creatine. Now, you do consume creatine daily from the food found in your diet. Red meat, for example, is especially high in creatine and other sources like salmon have plenty as well. But to reap the maximum benefits of creatine for muscle growth, supplementation is generally required. So simply take five grams of creatine monohydrate per day and your muscles will be fully saturated with creatine within three to four weeks, according to the evidence. Next, we have omega-3 fatty acids, which are often overlooked for how important and beneficial they can be. Most people do recognize that omega-3 fatty acids have a broad range of health benefits, including reducing inflammation, enhancing cardiovascular health markers, and reducing the risk of depression. But not that many people know that consuming omega-3 fatty acids also boost muscle growth. That's right, increasing omega-3 intake enhances lean body mass and muscle growth. That's actually a fact backed up by many different studies. There are many reasons for this, including that omega-3s can lower chronic inflammation levels, protect against excessive muscle damage, lower cortisol, benefit testosterone levels, enhance nutrient partitioning, and raise muscle anabolic signaling. So you're probably thinking, how do you know that you're getting enough omega-3 fatty acids? Well, one option can be to consume fatty fish. To get the maximum benefits, you'll likely have to eat around 700 grams of fatty fish per week, which is about a pound and a half. If you don't eat that much fish, an easy alternative could be to supplement with fish oil. The less fatty fish you eat, the more fish oil you'll need to reap all the benefits. So if you never eat fish, a good general guideline is to take between one and three grams of combined EPA and DHA per day. But if you eat about a pound and a half of fatty fish like salmon every week, then you probably don't need the additional fish oil supplementation to get the benefits. Another important nutrient is iron because it has a couple crucial functions inside your body. The main things that iron is responsible for is making red blood cells and carrying oxygen throughout your body. This is why it's no wonder that a study found that being deficient in iron can lower endurance capacity, resistance to fatigue, and of course strength. The good news for men is that an iron deficiency isn't all that prevalent. It's estimated that only about 2% of the male population is deficient in iron. This is still a pretty decently large number because it means that one out of every 50 men 
is deficient in iron. But the truth of the matter is that an iron deficiency is far more prevalent for females rather than for males. During menstruation, females lose quite a bit of iron, which is why it's estimated that about 17% of premenopausal women are deficient in this mineral. Fortunately, it's not that hard to get enough iron. Many food sources score very high in it. Meat, fish, and especially organ meats are very high in iron. If you're worried that you have low iron levels, you can also supplement with it. But I would recommend getting a blood test first before taking any iron supplements because having too much iron can be bad as well. Finally, last but not least, I have to mention, of course, protein separately, even though it is a macronutrient rather than a micronutrient. You see, the full picture of how muscle growth works is very complex. But from a high-level view, it's pretty simple to explain. To build muscle, you must be in a positive protein turnover rate. This means that more protein gets built up in your muscle tissue compared to what gets broken down. It's like building a wall. If you add more bricks to it, it becomes bigger. But if more bricks get removed from the wall compared to what you've added, the wall will get smaller. Now, to achieve a positive protein turnover rate in your muscle cells, you must consume enough protein because that nutrient forms the building block of muscle tissue. Regarding how much protein you should be taking, a 2018 meta-analysis published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that you'll get the maximum muscle building benefits by having 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. That equals about 0.73 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day. Be certain that you're taking in that much protein daily if you want to see muscle growth. So that about wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you learned some new applicable tips about the micronutrients that are crucial for muscle growth as well as optimal health. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you'd like to take the next step and you're looking for a simplified approach to burning fat and building muscle that's streamlined and comes with a full workout plan, a video exercise library, a customizable diet plan, a recipe book, and an accountability coach to help guide you through the entire process, then visit my website where you can get all of this for free just by putting your best foot forward and simply sticking to the plan. To find out how my clients are losing 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six weeks and getting a full refund at the end just for their participation, click the link in the description below, or you can simply visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.